Even though our cosmological model is based on observations, theories, and the mathematics supporting those theories, there are indications that the universe isn't completely adding up. You might have heard about the so-called crisis in cosmology. This issue emerged when different methods for measuring the age of the universe started giving inconsistent results, and this discrepancy continues. Cosmologists are still puzzled by this problem. Recent images from the James Webb Telescope have exacerbated the crisis further. For now, here's a very brief refresher. The universe is expanding, and distant galaxies are moving away from us. We measure the expansion rate using the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, which provides one estimate. Another method involves studying distant supernovas. We compare their known intrinsic brightness to their observed brightness to estimate the expansion rate at the time of the supernova. This method, known as using standard candles, yields a different estimate for the expansion rate. The expansion rate of the universe is known as the Hubble constant. However, the discrepancy between the results obtained from the two methods of measurement is referred to as the Hubble tension. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome that, because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. This, my friends, is the crisis in cosmology. But that's not the only issue we're facing. A new crisis has emerged, which appears to be a distant relative of the original crisis in cosmology, and it's a challenge that we find particularly frustrating. When you look up at the sky, provided you're not in a city or a location with obstructed starlight, you see countless stars. You can also spot the Andromeda galaxy as a faint smudge among the stars. This is because the universe is filled with stars and galaxies. But the crucial question is, how much of the universe is actually occupied by these objects? In other words, how much matter is truly present? It's a straightforward question, but the answer is anything but simple. This dilemma arises primarily because current cosmological observations disagree on how matter is distributed in the present-day universe, leading to what's known as the S8 tension, the troublesome cousin we're not fond of. The S8 tension measures the lumpiness, or clustering of matter in the universe. To simplify, imagine the universe as a colossal puzzle, where the pieces represent the matter scattered throughout space. Scientists aim to understand how this matter is distributed and how it clusters together. There are two primary methods for measuring this. First, we use low redshift observations, such as weak gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing occurs when the intense gravitational field of massive objects like black holes and galaxies acts as a cosmic magnifying glass. It bends and distorts the light from more distant objects, revealing insights that would otherwise remain hidden. However, the S8 value derived from this method, based on observations of the local universe, diverges from values obtained using the standard model of cosmology, which is based on cosmic microwave background CMB measurements. This discrepancy is at the core of the puzzling S8 tension. Clearly, there is an elusive element that defies our understanding, resisting alignment despite numerous theories, observations, and the hypothetical constructs supporting those theories. To unravel this mystery, scientists have turned to one of the world's most powerful supercomputers for the largest cosmological simulations ever conducted. The scale of this project becomes evident when you consider that the simulations required over 50 million hours of computer time, spread across 30,000 processors within the supercomputer at Durham University in the UK. The project, named Flamingo, an acronym for Full Hydra Large Scale Structure Simulations with All Sky Mapping for the Interpretation of Next Generation Observations, stands out not only for its immense scale and high resolution, but also for its thorough and comprehensive approach. 
Distinct from earlier simulations that primarily focused on modeling dark matter, Flamingo extends its scope beyond gravity alone. While dark matter makes up the majority of the universe's mass, ordinary baryonic matter, though comprising only about a fifth of the total mass, plays a crucial role in how cosmic matter is distributed on smaller scales. Factors such as galactic winds driven by supermassive black holes and supernova explosions can hinder galaxy growth, unlike previous simulations that considered dark matter in isolation. Flamingo includes and tracks ordinary matter as well, acknowledging that although dark matter dominates gravitational effects, the influence of ordinary matter is equally significant. Despite notable advancements, such as accurately depicting the formation of celestial bodies like the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies, Flamingo falls short in addressing the observed weak clumping of matter in the current universe. In other words, it failed to resolve the very issue it was designed to tackle, the S8 tension. The Flamingo simulation suggests that something is fundamentally amiss with our cherished standard model of cosmology. Moreover, these simulations contradict observations from the James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories regarding the distribution of matter in the universe. While the current theory elegantly explains galaxy evolution, it has a problem. It predicts that galaxies are 7% more closely clustered than they actually are. Even with the new, more detailed simulation that includes the effects of supermassive black holes, the result is still 5% more clumpy than observed. Now, while this might seem challenging, it's actually a positive development for science. It indicates that we're making progress and that our cosmological model requires significant revisions. This is how science evolves, through questioning and refining our understanding. A major shift is on the horizon, and it's already becoming apparent. What are your thoughts? Drop your comments below.